I didn't steal anything from that fat slob apart from his daughter's heart. All three of them, truth be told. I ran over to Greed as he fell forward. Shit. Greed, are you okay? He didn't respond. How do you even get like this? I thought his armor kept him safe. Wingnut said as he slowly moved closer to the fallen Pegasus. Some magic and weapons can harm him, but not much else. I said as I looked him over. What should we do with him? Windthrasher asked. I don't know. Probably pick him up off the floor. Maybe get him to one of the rooms so Aura can look him over. I said, trying to lift him with my magic. I don't know, Shadow. He's a sin. I say let him bleed out. Aura said. Oh, shut up and help me get him to a bed. I said, turning towards the others. Windthrasher, you and Stardust fly up the shaft and go stand guard at the door to the shack. There's a good chance he was followed. Aura and Wingnut helped me carry him over to Manette's room and lay him down. I took a healing potion out of my saddlebags and poured it in his mouth as Aura pinched his nose to make him reflexively swallow. Some of his wounds started to heal before my eyes, and I could see his face relax as the pain faded. So what makes you think he's on our side? Aura asked. I mean, he said he helped you after Silver died, but since then he hasn't really done anything helpful. He hasn't been sending you any intel on the sins or warning you about where they're at. He could be a spy. Let's just say there are really good reasons that I can't quite explain right now. He's helped me in the past, and I'm sure it's because he's obsessed with me. But there is a chance that it's because under all that sinful greediness, he's one of the good guys. Well, one of the good guys who also happens to be a klepto, I replied. Anyway, could you get me a clean rag with some water on it so I can clean some of this blood off of him? She smirked a little. I'm not sure how clean it's gonna be, but... Just get something, please, I interrupted. Just get the rag, nag, 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 she mocked as she went to go get it. At least now we know who is the girl in this relationship. I just rolled my eyes, but couldn't help smile a little. Sure we do. So, is this really one of the seven sins of equinity? Bite asked as she walked from the door. Looking back at her, I nodded. Yeah, his name is Greed, but he's really not a bad pony or anything. Well, he is a bad pony, I guess, but not like the others. Are you sure? She asked. Yeah, he's helped me out a couple times in the past. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten a message my mare friend Silver left for me when she died. I think her death was too much for him. I think she helped him find a better side of himself. I said as I turned back to Greed, checking his wounds. From what I could tell, they weren't very bad. He just lost a lot of blood from all the cuts. Bite and Wingnut moved closer to me. Bite asking, You've talked about Silver before. How did she die? For a moment, an image flashed across my eyes. Silver laying in that small room, holes poked through her body. Mostly dried blood covering her body in the carpet. Her horn snapped off and lying next to her. I shook my head. Pride, Orikalos. My uncle killed her. This was before he knew who I was. She was taken as a hostage, so the sins could force me to give them my mark too. So your uncle, who used to be Pride, the same pony who killed my mother, killed your mare friend? He was traveling with you for a while too, right? How did you forgive a monster like him for what he did to you? Bite asked. Wingnut added, yeah, Shadow, I've been wondering about that, too. Why did you forgive Alec Oricalus for killing Silver? You never gave us a reason. One day, Silver died because of him, and the next day, poof, he was just there, and you said we could trust him. I sighed and looked back at the young two ponies. Honestly, I'm not sure I've forgiven him for killing Silver. I'm not sure I ever can. My uncle's done a lot of evil things in his life, most of it to help my mother, but with my memories back, I remember him being a fun pony. Some pony who always wanted to make sure I was doing okay. He used to sneak into our house sometimes when Mom and Dad went to bed and read me stories to help me sleep. So you can't see past the stallion he used to be or something? 
Bite asked. It's not that. I think it's more that I see the good in him. Somewhere buried deep in his shadowy form, there's a kind soul who wants to do better. He wants to make up for all the evil he's done. He's done everything he can to help me ever since he's found out who I was. I'm still angry about Silver, and I hate that he killed your mom, Bite. But I want to try and help him be a better pony. Hating him won't do any good. It won't bring back the ponies he's killed. It'll only make things worse. I don't have much family left, and I don't want to lose who I still have. I said. Might looked down at her hooves. I can't say that I hate him for what he did to Mom. But he did take her away from me. No matter what he does, I'll never forgive him or your mom for what they did. Her voice cracked a little, and with a hoof wipe to her eye, she turned and walked out of the room. Wingnut sighed. I'll go keep an eye on her. You gonna be okay here? I nodded. Yeah, but can you do me a favor? Yeah, what is it? Go down to the memory pods and grab three of the memories. I named off which three in the rows I needed. I have a feeling we're going to have to leave this place in a hurry, and I don't want to leave them behind. And those three could help me get Mom to see who I really am. No problem. Byte and I both examined the setup for those pods in the memory orb shelf. It's not hard to get them out, Wingnut said, turning to head out the door. Thanks, kiddo, I said as he left, passing Nora on her way back into the room. She came back with a damp, stained rag. Did the best I could. At least the water here seems clean. I took it out my magic and started to wipe away the blood on Greed's face. As I turned his face with my hoof, he said quietly, Your hooves are soft. I pressed the rag into one of his wounds and said, Creep. Ow! I was trying to be nice. I thought we had chemistry. Greed exclaimed. I don't call mouth-raping me chemistry. He scoffed. I am so not a raper. And the term is rapist genius? I know, but that makes it sound so professional. I'm clearly not a professional, he said with a grin. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, whatever, at least you seem to be doing better. So you said that Ori Callus is back to it old ways? Is he the one that did this to you? Heh, <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't for my shield, I'd be diced into nice little cubes fit for the White Hoof Society. You know, because they're cannibals. Allegedly. Cloak found out I was getting information for you and used some freaky crystal to sick pride on me, like her vicious little lapdog. I think if he was acting on his own free will, he would have done a better job of killing me. Or he was trying to let you go. Ori Callus is on my side. At least, he was until a few days ago. So my mother is controlling him with a crystal? I didn't think he'd be controlled with all the power he has. I asked. Wait, wait, wait. Mother? Greed asked, looking confused. Cloak is your mom? Yeah, Cloak is Grimoire Spell. My mother, I responded. He smirked. I always thought there was another reason she was hunting you like she was. How'd you get her to hate you so much? Wait, I thought Cloak's daughter died. And that's what she told Pride and the rest of us. I didn't. Some pony called Hex did. That... The way she thinks that I'm really dead and I'm an imposter of her daughter, Hex used this thing called the memory stone on her and altered her memories. I think there might be a way to fix it, but it won't be the same as getting her actual memories back. After three days of the stone being used on you, the memories are lost and gone for good. I explained. His smirk disappeared. Ah, that really sucks. I could find and kill this Hex guy if you want me to. Sounds like a real douche. No, you can't. He also happens to be the father of some friends of mine. I'm pretty sure if they found out I sent someone to kill their dad, I'd be dead within a week. Why is that? He asked. They're hunters of the supernatural. I think I qualify as something they'd hunt. I'm pretty sure I just got lucky when I met them because I was able to keep what's inside me under control. 
He smirked again. Sounds like you've been a busy mayor. All that aside, looks like you got your good looks from your mom. She's actually pretty hot, in the old mayor kind of way. Not really saying I'd freak that, but... I pressed the rag harder into another wound. He groaned, and I said, I'm sorry, I must have blood in my ear. What was that? Ow! Stop doing that! He protested. Maybe I will, if you stop being such a creepy perv. I let up on the pressure and continued to get the rest of the blood off as I asked. Anyway, what is there any chance that you were followed? It doesn't matter if I was followed or not. You're in our old hideout. He replied. I have Stardust and Wind Thrasher standing watch upstairs in case something happens. And what do you mean, your old hideout? He pushed my hoof away and sat up. Trust me, that's not enough. You should run while you can. They're out for blood. This place is where the sins worked out of when we were in New Pegasus. Run and what? Leave you here like this, Greed? I'm not the kind of pony to leave someone behind when I run and duck for cover in safety. I argued. Yeah, it's annoying sometimes. Aura added. It's not Greed anymore, remember? I don't know what to call you right now. You never told me your real name. I said. My name's Thundercracker, or at least it was before I was forced to become a sin. Anyway, none of that matters right now. I came here to warn you that they're coming for you, and that you don't have much of a window to run. Aura narrowed her eyes. How'd you even know she was here? In that case, how did the sins know we were here? Thundercracker sighed. The cloak had a spell on the lift here. If it was triggered... It would let her know. Since y'all entered a few days ago, the sins knew. I cocked my head at that. If that's true, then why did she never look at the memories downstairs? Those old things. She didn't trust it. She thought it was trapped for some reason. Manette made that thing, and she was afraid that if anybody tampered with it, they'd get stuck in the pods. Also, we weren't here a lot, and when we were, we stayed up here. He replied. Strange. Normally, she'd do everything she could to get the memory orbs. I said, then shook my head. We'll worry about it later. For now, let's figure out what we should do next. We need to run. I'm sure I wasn't followed, but like I said, Cloak knows some ponies here. She won't be hard, far behind me, he said. Too bad. I'm not running. I'm the carrier for goddess's sake. I'm gonna stay and fight if I have to. I figured something like this was going to happen sooner or later, and I'd rather just get it over with and stop my mother, or die trying. Hopefully, not the latter, I retorted. Aura was sitting on a stool in the corner and cleared her throat. <laughs> I'm sort of a fan of running. I know what Ori Callis does to ponies and whatnot. I don't want to be another gore stain in the wasteland. There's a key significance of battling pride this time, though. First, we know his weakness. Second, he's not in control of his actions, and I can try breaking through to him to help him overcome the mind control. Third, my mother doesn't have all the sins anymore. Greed, I mean Thundercracker, can't help protect them. Gluttony isn't around to try and eat anyone. Wrath is dead, and we know a way to slow down Envy. All we have to deal with is Oricalus, Sloth, and that skank Rust. I replied, Thundercracker bowed his head. It's still a death wish, Shadow. The sins that are left are the strongest out of all of us. Plus, you're forgetting about the new wrath kid she's got under her. And that poor sap doesn't know what's really going on with the whole thing. He just follows orders. I'd totally forgotten about the new wrath. I don't know how I could forget the bastard that recently shot me with a poison dart, but then I remembered Stardust. You forget we also have one of the best trained scout snipers in the wasteland with us. With the right vantage, he shouldn't be much of a problem unless he's as good as Stardust is, or better, which I highly doubt. He's from the same program as your friend up there. Believe me, he's good. Thundercracker said solemnly. From the same program as Stardust? Why would any of them align themselves with the Enclave? Is he a loyalist? 
The last time I checked, every pony from Stable 97 hated the Enclave after everything that happened there. I have no idea. All I know is that he's really good, he replied. I was about to send you intel on him when I got caught by Cloak. That's how I was found out. Hey, Shadow. How's it going down there? Because we got to get the fuck out soon? Stardust asked, his voice echoing down the shaft and through the open door. I walked out of the room and over to the door that led to the shaft. Why? Is there someone up there? I'm not actually sure. But there's a gnarly-ass storm coming and it doesn't look good. Stardust replied. That's pride, Thundercracker said, walking up behind me slowly. You and your friend should go while you can. I should be able to hold him off for a bit. And why the fuck would I leave your dumbass here? I understand you want to protect me and everything, but you can't just kill yourself and think I'd let you. I protested. Shadow, if he wants to stay here, it's his choice. Laura said before Thundercracker could speak. Really? You just let him die to protect us? That's not how we do things. We're supposed to be heroes, or at least wastelanders that only kill bad things. Plus, Gre- Fucking goddesses, damn it. I mean, Thundercracker is my friend. When would I ever leave one of you behind to face certain death? Wingnut was in the doorway and raised a hoof. Um, is this something we should really be debating right now? Also, heroes or not, every hero knows when it's time to turn around and run like a little bitch. I sighed. Thundercracker, do you think you can fly or at least walk well enough to escape with us? If not, I could probably hold you in my magic. Thundercracker smiled. As much as I'd enjoy that experience, yes, I can walk. If pride doesn't kill us, I should probably tell him later to stop hitting on me in front of Aura. She probably really was ready to skin him alive right now. It's too bad we have to leave this place so soon. I would have liked to stay here a bit longer to see if there's anything else I could find out about Mom. On the other hoof, we could come back here someday if we need somewhere to rest when we're close by. Okay then, let's go kick some sinful ass. Hoo hoo, sexy. Thundercracker said, making me blush a little as he activated his shield. At least this still works. I should be able to help keep the others away from you, but Cloak and Pride will be a problem. Bite and Wingnut joined us by the lift a moment later. Once I knew we had our stuff, we took the lift back upstairs to join Stardust and Windthrasher, everyone ready for a fight. I readied my plasma rifle and tossed Dreamwalker to Windthrasher, who immediately dropped it. I'm sorry, Shadow. I didn't mean to drop it, but I do have to use it. And wouldn't that thing break my teeth? Windthrasher, you don't have any guns. You need something to use that isn't strictly your vocal prowess and whatever else you do. Also, Dreamwalker was designed for an earth pony. The recoil won't hurt your mouth. I replied as I she, I picked up the gun with my magic and put the bit in her mouth. But... She mumbled through the bit. No buts. This is what remains of the sins. And I don't want to risk one of us not having a weapon. It's not like before where we were only facing one or two of them. At least I'm pretty sure what remains of them is coming. Thundercracker wasn't too clear on whether they were all with the mother or not. She cocked her head to one of her ears, drooped a little to the side as she mumbled and with a confused look on her face. Who's Thundercracker? Oh, right, she was upstairs when he told me his name. Greed. I walked over to the door and looked at the strange storm Stardust was talking about, and strange didn't even begin to describe it. It was like looking at a giant moving cloud of smoke and lightning dancing all around it. As I gazed upon it, I could feel the evil it held. It was cold and empty. I looked to the ground ahead and I could see a small group of ponies walking. It was easy to tell who was with Horikalis walking in front of the pack with my mother. From what I could tell, his power was enveloping his vessel in a silhouette of blackness with glowing purple eyes. I got a shot lined up on Lust. Stardust said as he looked down the scope of his rifle. Take it, I said quickly. If we take the slut out now, she won't be able to use her stupid seductive powers on control on at least some of us. Right as Stardust was about to take the shot, a bullet dug into the wood of the shack's wall. 
splintering the wood everywhere. Fuck. Sniper! Stardust yelled, taking cover behind the wall. I thought Wrath was dead. Don't you remember? They replaced him with some new kid. I said as I also took cover behind the wall on the other side of the door. Ah, right. Shit. What are we supposed to do now? He asked. Here, take this. Thundercracker said, tossing a stealth buck to Stardust. Use that to get a vantage point. If you fly, the little bastard won't see your hoof prints. And lucky for you, we're not above the clouds, so he won't be able to see the distorted light through his scope. And what if he has a thermal scope? Stardust asked. He doesn't. Says they take away from the challenge. What a douchebag. Right. Thundercracker replied. Stardust started to activate the stealth buck as he said through his teeth. I swear to Celestia, if I get shot in your other ear. Thundercracker smiled, then flinched, his half ear twitching a little, blood still dripping from it, even with his armor activated. Bitch, you know the ladies dig scars. Stardust turned on the stealth buck and flew out the door as Thundercracker pulled a small yet strange-looking rocket launcher out of his saddlebags. What the hell is that? I asked. This is the one-of-a-kind experimental weapon called the Pocket Rocket, being developed by the Enclave. I probably should have told Stardust and, uh, the blue one to cover their nads. This baby's radioactive, he explained. I took half a second to think about it and remembered something as he took aim. My pit buck didn't click at all, though. Are you sure that thing's live? Eh, that's weird. Whatever, pit bucks are stupid anyway. Also, avert your eyes from the flash unless you want to be blind, he said as he bit down on the trigger. He'd surrounded us with an overwhelming pressure as the rocket left the housing. I watched as it whizzed through the air and was ready to close my eyes as it made impact. But what happened, I only suspected, would have a 30% chance of happening. The rocket blasted towards Pride and phased through his body only to bounce off one of the Sin's heads. I couldn't tell who it was, though. Aura started to laugh. Hey, dumbass! Looks like your little red rocket was dead! He grit his teeth. It's not funny. How was I supposed to know it wouldn't blow up? Then I thought about it. You were going to blow up my mom and my uncle? He rolled his eyes. Duh. Rocket. Rockets go boom. Not yours, apparently. Aura said again. Right then, a bolt of lightning struck the top of the shack from the giant cloud, starting a small fire and deafening all of us. I aimed my plasma rifle out the door and randomly fired a few shots. We have to do something. We were trapped in this shithole, and there's no other way out but this door. Can't you teleport? You're a freaking unicorn, aren't ya? Bite said snarkily. Not without leaving you guys behind. I can only teleport myself, most of the time, and only one other when I can. But you could get a better vantage on them and cover us while we get out of the shack. And find your own cover, she said again. The idea wasn't a bad one. But with my luck, I'd get shot by this new wrath. How about we tweak the idea? Give me your gravity, Glun. She balked. No. Why not? Bite sighed. Because you don't know how to use it, and it's mine. It's like any other gun. Aim and shoot. Do I look that stupid to you? She gave me the really look and raised an eyebrow. Yes, but I guess you're right about the aim and shoot thing. I took the gravity gun and my magic. I'm going to teleport somewhere near them, blast the shit out of them. Once you see them go down, run like hell to some cover. A rock, a hole in the ground, I don't care, just get to a place that's not here. They all nodded as I drew upon my magic and teleported. Where I wanted to teleport was behind them. But it turns out my horn had other plans and I ended up face to face with Ori Callus, who grinned. Technical difficulties, Shadow. Instead of uh, dignifying that with a response, I aimed the gravity gun at the ground and fired. I knew the gravity gun wouldn't hurt Ori Callus, but it would hurt the others. What I didn't realize is that when you fire a gun like this, you shouldn't do so when you're standing so close. The next thing I knew, I was disoriented and flying through the air. 
When I spotted which direction the ground was, I saw that it was quickly approaching. I tried teleporting again, but nothing happened. Probably because up to was three different kinds of left and down was someplace between right and northwest. Maybe I'll hurl before I die. At least it'll be more productive than trying to teleport again. Then I was caught by a pair of hooves. You're clumsy, Thundercracker said as he sat me down behind a brick wall that must have been the former cover of House's foundation. Don't worry. I'll cover while you get your bearings. Just no more experimental weapons, please, I replied. Experiments are for scientists. It's now my fault the damn thing didn't work. I got this zebra rifle, though, and it hasn't jammed on me yet. He said as he took aim with the rifle and started shooting at Sloth. I looked around the corner and saw all of them. Sloth, who was dodging Thundercracker's shots. Lust, who was engaged in a battle with Aura. My mother, who was being helped off the ground by Orikalos. And Envy, who took the form of a hellhound and was fighting with Windthrasher, Wingnut, and Bite. I was surprised how well they were holding up against him. There was someone missing, though. Wrath. I didn't see him in the sky, and it didn't look like any of the others were being shot at yet, so Stardust was probably distracting him. Or he's already dead. I looked over at where Orikalos was helping my mother again, and saw that it was only the two of them. I was keeping my chance to get into Mom's head and show her what I just saw. I took a flash grenade out of my saddlebags and tried to call my magic again to teleport. The only thing my horn did was make a pss sound and spurt out a little bit of magic energy that popped and fizzled. I took another quick look around at the chaos and noticed everyone else was distracted. Thundercracker, cover me. I'm going to go after my mom in pride. Like hell you are. He'll blast you into a cloud of dust, he replied. Orichalis is stronger than some dumb crystal. If I'm right, he'll try to resist the urge to kill me for long enough. Long enough for what? He asked. For me to incapacitate him and get to my mother. I replied. Shadow. Just cover me. I said as I got up and ran out from cover behind the wall. I could hear Thundercracker behind me. Shadow, wait, he's... I didn't hear the rest of what he said as I got further away from him and closer to Pride and Mom. While I was running, my uncle noticed the movement and vanished before my eyes, as Mom started to shoot in my general direction. I stopped running and dove behind a rock to avoid the shots, and in turn shot back with my plasma rifle. Then the rock turned pitch black and pride oozed out of it. I tried to get up and run, but for some reason I couldn't move. Hello, Shadow, Pride said. I struggled to lift my hooves, but couldn't. Why can't I move? I've possessed your shadow. Grimoire wants you alive for now. However, now that I've caught you, she'll make me kill you once she's decided you're no longer useful. He answered. Come on, Uncle Ori. You can fight that stupid rock. I said. His facial expression, if you could call cloudy, shadowy smoke a face, didn't change. No. I can't control any of my actions. Grimoire made me cast a spell to enhance my power for a short time. It's a spell that draws upon the darkness of the caster's soul, called Apocalypse Drive. In my shadow form, I was powerful, but as the description of the spell says, I have become Death, the destroyer of worlds. I grasped the flash grenade of my magic, hoping again he wouldn't notice. Well, Uncle Ori, if you're Death, then go into the light, I said. I closed my eyes just before the grenade detonated and felt his grip on me disintegrate. I tried to get up and run, but found myself bound by shadows again. Like I said before, my power is enhanced. Flash grenades don't have much of an effect on me right now, Pride said as the rest of his body reformed. Right then, Mom walked up behind me. Funny, I didn't think I'd see you and your posse of misfits here. Though I'm not surprised. Lucky for me, I wasn't far when the alarm went off three days ago. Let's call it a bonus package deal, with batteries included, I said sarcastically. She backhoofed me across the face. Don't get smart with me. I want to know what the hell you think you're doing here. Now was my chance. She was right in front of me. I could cast one of the memory spells I read in her book and show her what I've seen the past few days. 
I started to cast the spell and felt an unusual pressure in my head. Once again, my horn spluttered out glittery magic and failed to cast the spell. But this time, my head immediately started to pound. Mom sniffed the air, mockingly. Hmm, technical difficulties? It smells like you burned out your horn. I guess batteries aren't included in your package deal. However, it makes things easier for me. Easier for you to do what? I asked. She smiled maliciously. Interrogating you to find out why you're at this place. Taking care of greed and probably killing one of your friends. Not all of them, of course. It seems you've managed to reverse the effects of what was done to the Pegasus. I'll be taking him with me for a special execution. How are you going to do that when you can't even find him? I noticed your sniper hasn't been taking any shots at us lately, which means he's engaged in battle with Stardust. Ah, but now I have a hostage, she retorted. All of my friends, you know, know you don't want me dead, so I'm not really the best hostage. If you take me prisoner, I'll probably just end up escaping and getting rescued by them, or there's a chance that Aquila will emerge and tear you all to shreds, I said plainly. Well, at least you're admitting that you're worthless. I would have thought you'd go on some long-winded rant about being some sort of good-hearted hero. Though Aquila does worry me. From the look of your coat, she's taking over. No matter. I have my ways of keeping the star spawn trapped for a while. Mom said, turning towards her brother. Pride, tie her up and teleport her out of here. I'm not risking losing her again. I looked towards my uncle and noticed he hadn't moved. He narrowed his purple eyes. No. What was that? Mom asked, pulling a crystal from around her neck. I noticed that it looked a lot like the one Scribe used to trap him. I told you before, Pride. You work for me, not this mare who's trying to make you think she's Star. He moved forward a little, then stopped again. Grim, it's not a lie. She is who she says she is. I keep trying to make you understand. He's right, Mom, it's me. Please just trust me a little and stop fighting us. I can prove it to you, I yelled, still trying to move. Mom looked over at me, her eyes filled with rage. Don't ever refer to me as your mother. My daughter's dead. I could see that Oricalus was trying his best to stop himself from following her orders as he replied. Why else would I help her unless I knew who she was? I've seen her memories. I know what you did to hide her. This is Star. She didn't die, you just can't remember. Stop lying to me, Mom yelled. You told me that she was dead when my memories were messed with. You told me what happened when I couldn't remember at all. Why are you trying to lie to me now? I only told you what you told me. You were hiding her from every pony so she could grow up in Stable 28. You wanted her safe, even from me, Ordicala said. I saw a single tear run down Mom's face, and she looked back at me. She can't be Star. I remember some things now, and saw her die. Her heart gave out the same day I found Project Stargazer. I did everything I could to save her, but I couldn't stop it. I saw your memories, down in the bunker. Those orbs you didn't take or watch because you thought they were a trap. You put those there for me. I saw so much of what happened to you. I saw how you met Dad. Saw what you had to do to fix me. I saw when you first found the Forgotten Library. For a moment... Her eyes went wide as she started to say, How'd you know about... Then Lust slammed into her, Wind Thrasher landing a few feet away. Let her go, Ori Callus. I can't, Wind Thrasher. It's taking everything I have to keep myself from following the rest of Grimm's orders, Ori Callus said, his body shifting between shadow form and his pony form. Mom pushed Lust off of her. Can't you even take down one mutated pegasus? Lust groaned. My spell doesn't work on her cloak. Fine. I'll kill her myself. Mom said, her horn glowing. But to my utter surprise, Wind Thrasher didn't pull out Dreamwalker or use her scream. She pulled out the rangefinder. I forgot she'd been keeping it safe. She pointed it right at my mother, saying around its bit. Let her go. 
or I'll destroy all of you. Mom just laughed. You wouldn't do that. Your courier friend we've got in the blast, too. Windthrasher just smiled. No, she won't. Huh? Mom said. Then out of nowhere, Wingnut showed up, throwing a flash grenade at Rory Callus. It was so fast that I barely had time to close my eyes as it went off. It was just enough for me to get free from my uncle's power. I started to run as Wingnut ran past me, getting this far away from Mom and the rest of them as I could. As soon as we reached Windthrasher, I yelled, Windthrasher, you can't use that on them. It'll kill Mom and Uncle. Looking back towards them, I saw that they still hadn't moved. They knew what that weapon could do. Windthrasher on the other hoof said, Sorry, Shadow. I saw those memories, too. Your mother wouldn't want to be like this. The same goes for your uncle. We have to kill them. Windthrasher, I thought you hated killing. I yelled as she started to pull down on the trigger. Windthrasher was looking. A wingnut was looking at her, too. Windthrasher, you can't do this. I do hate killing. But you said it yourself. One day I'll have to choose between killing to save a friend or not killing and losing a friend. I'm not letting any of them hurt you or any of us again, Windthrasher said. Before I could stop her, she pulled down on the trigger. Mom's eyes went wide as a beep came out of the rangefinder. Run! The three of them turned and started running, as I tried to scream for Windthrasher to stop. Then I saw that nothing was happening with Solar Flare's rangefinder. The message on the screen wasn't doing what it normally did. Instead, a new message came up. Solar Flare's rangefinder genetic scanner has detected the subject trying to fire this weapon is not recognized. Deactivating. Mom seemed to realize that something went wrong, because she turned after a minute and smiled. I guess that thing doesn't work all the time, does it? No. No, 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 no. Why isn't it working? Windthrasher said around the bit. I remembered then that only certain ponies could use the rangefinder. It has a genetic scanner on it. You can't fire it, Windthrasher. She put down the rangefinder. Fine. Then I'll just kill them my own way. No. You'll lose yourself to bloodlust. I said, but she ignored me. She opened her muzzle right as Mom started to use her magic again. Time to die, freak. Windthrasher let out a more powerful scream than I'd ever heard her use. I had to cover my own ears as sound waves blasted towards Mom, Morty, Callus, and Lust. Lust tapped a choker around her throat with a red gem on it. It turned green and she stepped in the way, opening her own mouth and sending something a lot like Windthrasher's scream towards her. The two sound waves crashed into each other. A loud boom echoed out around both of them and they flew back. I was about to go after Windthrasher to make sure she was okay. Then my vision seemed to flicker and a moment later, at least it seemed like a moment, I was standing in front of my mother, closer to the shack. Oricalus was next to her, still trying to fight the control, but Windthrasher, Wingnut, and Lust were gone. I looked around, confused as to what happened. The feeling only got worse when I saw Mom looking at me funny. I took a step back, asking, What just happened? I'd like to know the same thing. One minute you're running towards your bat friend, the next you try to attack me, Mom said, slowly running towards me. Then after I got away from your attack, you started telling me how you could help me with something. Then you ran towards my shack, then changed again. Oricalus' eyes were wide as he struggled to say, Shadow, it was Aquila. My mother turned towards Oricalus. Quiet! He stopped talking, then I looked between him. Let Oricalus go. If you do, I'll do whatever you want. But please, stop controlling him. Mom looked back at me. This is a family affair. Stay out of my business. I had enough. I pulled the plasma rifle off my back and pointed it at her. Why are you so goddesses damned stubborn? I am family, you selfish bitch. I'm Star. I was born in the Crystal Empire. I was hurt by Ori Callus in his lab. I was sick and you tried everything to help me. I was there when you went to Stargazer Lab. You took me to the Stable 28, and two years after that, you abandoned me so you could find a way to get this monster out of me that you put there in the first place. Her eyes narrowed. None of that happened to you. You were nothing but a stupid filly whose memories were concocted, so you'd think you were my star. Also, I want my rifle back. 
it's... I pulled the trigger, firing a blast of plasma at her hooves. She jumped back, then glared at me as I said, A family heirloom, I know. I saw you take it from your mother. It used to belong to Dwarf Star. She looked shocked at that. Did Ori Callus tell you about that? I could tell that my uncle wanted to say something, but he couldn't, so I answered. No, you showed me in one of the memories down in the bunker. Stop lying to me! She screamed, her horn starting to glow. I could feel tears starting to fall as I said, You're not ever going to believe me, are you? I looked into her angry eyes as she said, I may have lost some of my own memories, but I know what happened to Star. She was nothing like you. She was sweet, caring, kind, and powerful. Nothing like you. I've done some bad things in my life, Courier, but you make me look like a saint. My star would never have destroyed Mill City Tower, killing every pony inside with a super weapon. She wouldn't have killed so many ponies in Appleton. She wasn't a monster, but you are. So no, I'll never believe you. Then I'm sorry, Mom, but I can't let you go on living like this. I hope you'll find peace with the goddesses and forgive me for having to do this, I said as I pulled the trigger. As I did, her horn flashed and I felt the plasma rifle jerk and the shot went wide. I tried to pull the rifle away from her magical grip, but something was wrong. My magic was weakening, and I could feel the rifle slowly slipping out of my own grip. As that happened, I noticed that swift breeze was picking up around us. Then I saw a deep rage in her eyes as she glared at me, magic starting to flow from her horn. Using her hoof, she slowly pulled out the crystal she had, and it started to glow again. Regalus's body started to turn to shadow again as he yelled, Star, run! His voice was cut off as his body turned fully into shadows. He started to grow and swirl around my mother and I. As my uncle's shadow form blocked out sight of um, my friends and everyone else around us, she finally spoke. I told you over and over again not to call me Mom. You've made my life hell for the past couple months, Courier. You've killed my sins. You've brainwashed my brother. Stole my pip buck, ruined my plans, and worked with my husband to destroy years of work. And you keep trying to make me think you're my daughter? I'm done with you. I don't care if you die anymore. I'll risk the Mark II wiping the memory. I only need it to unlock falling shadows. Magic circles appeared around me, and right away I could feel my heart start to beat faster. I lost control of my magic. Mom pulled the plasma rifle away as I fell to the ground, clenching my chest. I felt like it had when I was little and sick. Pain ran up my body. It was getting hard to breathe and my body felt weak. I looked up at her as purple lightning started to flash around us from Ori Callus. Mom looked down on me with nothing but hatred. My, her, plasma rifle hovering above her. Please, don't do this. The magical circles glowed brighter and the pain grew. I started to scream as she said, you want to be my daughter? Then you can die the same way she did. You can suffer as your heart is starved. Feel in the pain she did as she took her last breath. I could barely breathe, but just managed to get out. If I die, so does Aquila's power. And you need that for falling shadows. A small smile appeared on her lips. We'll see about that. Goodbye, courier. My vision started to fade but I was able to see something blast through my uncle's shadows. Right before, a pegasus in black power armor slammed into her, sending her flying. Right away, the pain in my chest vanished, and I was able to breathe again. I took a few deep breaths and looked over who just saved me. Who I saw took me by surprise. Solstice? The gray and pink mare's helmet wasn't on, and she smiled and laughed as she held my mother down. Now that's what I call good timing. Mom's horn started to glow again as she yelled, Get off me, traitor! Yeah, I don't think so, you skeevy hag. Solstice pulled a ring out and placed it on her horn. There we go. No more creepy magic for you. Mom's horn stopped glowing and her eyes went wide. Pride? Get her off me! I noticed then that my uncle wasn't making a wall of shadows anymore. He was standing right next to me. No, Grim. You need to calm down and listen for once. 
I noticed that the crystal Mom was holding had fallen to the ground when Stolsis tackled her. Slowly, I pulled it close to my magic, then stomped on it, shattering the crystal under my hoof. Then I looked to Solstice. Tie her up. Then I looked back towards my friends, who were still fighting, and said, Uncle Ori, think you can make the sins leave? He chuckled. I think I can do that. He started drawing his power, then he yelled in his enhanced voice, All sins fall back. We have the courier. Plan Beta. How's that going to help? They think I'm being controlled by Grimm still. We can use that to help us. He started to say, then Sloth and Envy landed in front of us. Envy grinned. Looks la, pride's back to being the enemy again. Sloth yawned. What a drag. Really, pride, did you think we wouldn't see what happened over here? Let Cloak go and stand down. We aren't scared of you anymore, and we really need the courier, so... Don't make us have to kill her and her friends. Mom yelled. Kill them anyway! That's an order! And we smiled again. Sounds like a plan to me. Before he could do anything, a shot rang out, and Envy was sent flying as a bullet slammed into his side. Sloth turned around, looking for the shooter, only to find a power armor door stop's rear hooves slamming into his face as he yelled, POW! Right in the kisser! Sloth slid back, a little blood flowing from his nose. Great. More Dashites to deal with. This whole mission sucks. I was still looking at Doorstop. You're here too? He started to chuckle. Damn right we are. Also, a few of the kids from Stable 97. Good thing we showed up when we did. Then Doorstop looked at Sloth and Envy, who were getting back up. If I were you, I'd put a giddy up in your step and get out of here as fast as you can. Y'all might be tough, but you can't take on the ponies I trained from the Devil's Children program. They're bred to be killers. Envy spat blood on the ground. I can take all of you. Really now? Are you sure about that? Doorstop asked, pulling out a silver whistle and showing it to him. I heard you don't like the sound this thing makes. Envy growled and backed up a little. I'll make you pay for this. Even if Envy can't fight, and as much as I hate to, I can take all of you if I have to, Sloth said, stepping closer to Doorstop. Doorstop didn't back down. Shadow, how long have the Sins been fighting you all? My uncle was the one to answer. Almost fifteen minutes. Doorstop looked at my uncle, confused. Huh, I thought you were dead. My uncle just rolled his eyes. No, I'm not. And I'm on your side. Our side. Cool, I'll take it. Then he looked back at Sloth, who was a few inches away now. So, fifteen minutes. So that means you should run out of energy, right? About. Like some pony had just cut invisible strings, Sloth's body fell to the ground and he looked like he was about to fall asleep. Damn. I wasn't watching. The time. Then he passed out and began to snore. Two down, two to go, Doorstop said, lifting his pip buck, which I could see at a broadcaster, then he set into it. Okay, fillies and colts, time to show these so-called sins who's tougher. Light em up. As he said that, at least ten pegasi flew into the air, all of them with automatic weapons and wearing power armor. Where the hell did he get that power armor? They all took aim at Lust, who was a few steps away from Windthrasher. Looking up at the Pegasi, they opened up fire right as Lust took to the air and flew away, but not before one of the bullets tore through one of her hind legs. She screamed with pain, or like a beautiful song to my ear. As though, as soon as she was gone, the Pegasi stopped their attack. Good job, cadet idiots! Now reload and help Dusty with wrath! Doorstop said into his pit buck. They all reloaded, but before they could do much else, a shot rang out from the direction Lust fled, and one of the Pegasi went down as a bullet went through her visor. Another shot followed, the first, and another Pegasus fell. Before, I assumed, was Wrath could take another shot. Stardust showed up out of nowhere and opened fire towards the direction the shots were coming from. 
In quick succession, he blasted three shots, then lowered his rifle. T damn it! The coward flew away! Stardust said as he started to fly towards the rest of us, with the Pegasi following. Envy cackled, and a sickly grin parted his muzzle. You think you've won, don't you? I couldn't help but smile as I nodded. Looks like it, Envy. How about you be a good little changeling and come with us peacefully? That is, unless you want to die a long and slow death. Mom turns her head toward Envy. Regroup. You know what to do. Oracalus turned around quickly, shadows flowing from him. Keep quiet, Grim. But it was too late. Envy laughed. Understood, Cloak. In a flash of green light, he turned into a griffin, flying forward and picking up Sloth. He twisted around and flew away before any of us could do anything. Stardust lifted his rifle to take aim, but Doorstop put a hoof on it and pushed it down. Don't. It won't do much good against him. Let's leave them for now. Looks like we've gotten the real prize as is. But they're getting away, Stardust said angrily. I put a hoof on his shoulder. Let it go. We've got what we need. The sins aren't much without Grimoire or Callus. He sighed, then nodded. I understand. It just bothers me when we were so close to getting rid of them for good. I know. Then I turned back towards doorstop. Hey, old buck. So, why are you back here? I thought you were staying in the kingdom? It was Solstice who answered as she started to bind Mom's hooves. We were, but some of the stable 97 brats wanted to go to New Pegasus. Said something about that's where the action is. The rest stayed behind to help Sheena. Before I could ask more, the eight Pegasi who were left landed and none other than Shortcake walked forward. Sergeant Doorstop, we lost two to a sniper. The rest of us are fine. What are your orders? Doorstop sighed. Yes, I saw. Let's give them the last respects. Then we should be heading out once we know Shadow and her friends are all right. Yes, sir. Shortcake said, then smiled over at Stardust, fluttering her eyes. Hey, Dusty. Nice to see you again. Right as she did, Windthresher landed next to us with Wingnut. She saw Shortcake's attempts at flirting with Stardust and let out a small growl as she stalked past the younger mare. Wingnut seemed to not notice as he jumped off her back and ran over to me. How many you see bite? I started to look around for the young filly when she yelled out from the shack. I'm in here! You okay? I asked as she poked her head out of the shack. Yeah, I was just making sure the sins didn't get into the bunker, but I think it was too late, she replied. Also, some stuff burned a little in here from that lightning strike. Wait, what? I asked, walking towards her, then stopped as my mother started to laugh. <laughs> Let me guess. The bunker went into lockdown, right? Mom said, still laughing. Bite looked over at her, and I saw rage pull at her features as she seemed to keep it down. She said, Yeah. Oricalus cursed. The bunker goes into lockdown when it's threatened. Grim made me strike the shack with my magic. That must have triggered it. How long will it last? I asked. Mom looked up from where she was now tied up. One month. If nothing else happens to the shack, then the lockdown will lift. But until then, no pony can get in. Or out. I do hope you didn't leave anything down there. I sighed. Damn it. I was hoping to hook her up to the pods. Oricalus put a hoof on my shoulder. It'll be fine, Star. We'll find a way to get back to normal. Mom just rolled her eyes. Back to normal. You two act like I'm missing something, but I'm... Oh, shut up, Grim. It's getting really old, Oricala said, his horn glowing. A moment later, she passed out from whatever spell he just used. Solstice looked down at her, then shrugged. Hey, Shadow, your mom's kind of a bitch, you know. Tell me about it, I said as I walked over to where Bite was still glaring at her. You okay, kiddo? She's the one who had my mom killed. Then she glared over at my uncle. And he's the one who did it! Oricalus looked at Bite, looking confused. I've killed a lot of ponies, young mare. Whoever your mother was is just one in a long line of sins that I've committed. But if it helps, I'm sorry that your mother died because of my actions. 
Fuck you. Bite said, then walked away. Bite, wait, I said, but Wingnut stopped me from following. I'll go talk to her. You stay here and figure out what we're doing next, he said before running after the filly. Ori Callis looked at me. Who was her mother? The Marin Trotston, who was sending griffins after Mom so when she took the Mark II. She sent you to take care of her, I said with a sigh. Ori Callis looked sad as he said, Oh, I'd almost forgotten about that day. I didn't know that she had a kid. It doesn't matter right now. Light'll settle down, and if not, then we'll figure something out. Right now, we need to figure out what we're doing next, I said. Thundercracker landed next to us a moment later, looking over to Callus, then my mother, then me. That went better than expected. Or I landed a second later. Tell me about it. How'd you capture her? Hey, I was the one who took her down, not Miss Useless here, Solstice said, pointing her hoof at me. Aura just shrugged. Either way, glad you all showed up when you did. How'd you know where we were, though? I was wondering that, too, I said. Solstice shrugged. We stopped in a town two days back. Doorstop and I were trading when some robot came up to us and started telling us that we had to go to this location before we did anything else. Doorstop didn't want to believe her or even listen to her, but she was quite persistent. Said that we didn't have, if we didn't, something bad would happen to our friends. So we figured we'd at least take a look and check it out. I face hoofed and laughed. That fucking bot. I took a second to recover. Serendipity must have run into your group. Either way, I'm glad you showed up. Thank you, Solstice. I said. She shrugged. Don't thank me. If I would have known it was you, I wouldn't have come. Thundercracker smiled a little. She's a feisty one, isn't she? Stay away from me, creep. Solstice said, backing away from Thundercracker before turning towards me again. So why are you all the way out here? I had to deal with something. Why are you back here? I thought you were staying in the kingdom to stay away from the Enclave. No need anymore. Since Nightshade took over and made peace with the kingdom, life's gotten better. He gave me a pardon for running away from my post and made sure to call off the ponies looking for me to brand me. But I'm still not allowed back into the clouds for now, she said. Why not? I asked. I might have been forgiven for what I did, but a lot of ponies in Staratus would freak out if a pony like me, who spent so long in the wasteland, was back up in the clouds. Stratus thinks that if you spend too much time down here, you're contaminated. It'll take time for them to get to realize that's all a big lie. I guess I understand. Also, where'd you get all those sets of power armor? I asked. It was a gift from Nightshade, to the Pegasi in the kingdom who were part of the program. I also got a set for helping save them from the stable, she replied. Ah, enough talk about all the drama, Thundercracker said. What's next? I looked over my friend, then back at my uncle, and greed, I mean Thundercracker. I'm going to the ministry. Orticalis and Thundercracker both looked sick, as my uncle said. And that's the last place you want to go, Star. No, it's the place I need to go. I need to find this director and figure out if there's anything she knows that can help me get Aquila out of me, I said with a sigh. But, Shadow, Windthrasher tried to say, but I glared over at her and she shut up. I have to go there. I need to finish this bullshit before... before I lose myself to her. Or walked over to me and asked, What did you see in those pods? Did it explain what you need to do to get her out? A little. I know enough to know what I have to go there. How long do you have left? Or asked. Do you know? As she said that, I could feel Aquila's power throbbing in my head, and remembering how she took over without me even knowing for a moment, just a few minutes ago. Not long. A few days. I'm not sure. Aura pulled me into a tight hug. If that's where you need to go, then let's get moving. I nodded, then looked back at the rest of the group. We need to plan this out. Get every pony over here. I got it, Stardust said, flying towards where Doorstop was. I'll go get Wingnut and Bite, Aura said as she let me go. 
When they were gone, Windthrasher pulled me aside. Can we talk? I shook my head, trying to pull away from her. We don't have time. Make time, then, she said, pulling me along and ignoring my attempts to get free of her. She was a lot stronger than I thought she was. When we were away from the rest of the ponies, she rounded on me. I saw the same things you did in those pods, Shadow. Your mom said the only pony apart from you who can help her was Stormy. How do you even know that she'll be at the Ministry? Even more, how do you know she'll help you with Grim acting like she is? Stormy's dead, I said lamely. How do you know that? When Thrasher asked, confused. Because I cut her throat before blowing up Mill City Tower? I didn't know who she was or that she could help me. Wind Thrasher looked scared. She was the only pony who could do anything to help you apart from your mother. If she's dead, then how is going to the Ministry going to help? I don't know, but if this director was really trying to help my mother find Falling Shadows to fix me, then maybe she knows something that can help, I replied. Wind Thrasher moved closer to me. Shadow? What if she can't help you? I looked up at my friend. Then I only have one choice left. No. I'm not going to let you kill yourself, Shadow. If my death will save all of you, then I'm going to do it. I said. You can't just throw your life away like that, Shadow. You can fight her. Keep her back until we can fix this. Wind Thrasher said, sounding desperate. I sighed and hugged my head. I don't want to die. It's only a last resort, that's all. But if it comes down to it, I'll trade my own life for all of yours in a heartbeat. She stomped her hoof. I won't. I put a hoof to her lips to stop her from saying any more. Wind Thrasher, if you lost yourself to the bloodlust and there was no way of fixing you, what would you want us to do? Tears started to show on her eyes as she said quietly, I'd want you to end me so I wouldn't hurt all of you. That's right, I said as I hugged her. I don't want to die. I mean that. But if that's the only way, then so be it. She hugged me back, doing her best not to cry. If... if that has to happen, can you at least warn us first? I nodded, then pulled back. I'll tell you, but you have to promise me one thing. Don't tell Aura. She's hurting enough from the loss of her family and friends from the attack on Crimson Canyon. Shadow, you can't hide this from her. I can, at least for now. I'll tell her when I have to, but for now, I don't want her to worry about me or doing stupid things. Please, I need the others to not be worrying about me. She wiped away a tear, then nodded. Fine, as long as you do warn us first. Just don't wander off in the middle of the night, okay? Okay. Now let's get back to the others. It looks like they're waiting on us. Okay. She said, following me back as we walked towards the group. Once we got back, Doorstop looked at me and asked, So, what's going on? I took in a deep breath and let it out slowly. I have to head to Lost Holocorn, and soon. While I'm gone, I need some of you to help keep an eye on what's going on around here. The Red Talons are in shambles. The Steel Rangers are making trouble for a lot of ponies, and so are the Romans. Doorstop, I'm sure you and the others want to get back to Frosty Summit to help Violet, but shit's hitting the fan around here, and the ponies in here need help. Solstice, I'm not sure what your plan is, but if you can, I want you to head to Freedom and find where the Shadow Talons are, and let them know where we went. Talk to V. She's in charge of them while Aura's away. Who are the Shadow Talons? Solstice asked. Aura's new Talon group. Wingnut said, returning to the group with Bite and Aura. Wait, the Red Talons are gone? Doorstop asked, sounding shocked. I sighed. Yes. Now, please listen. I looked at Thundercracker. I'm not sure what you plan on doing, but if you can, I need you to find the rest of the Sins and see if you can help us take care of them. Maybe get a message to Nightshade and... Let him know to send a team down here to take them out? Thundercracker shrugged. <laughs> Can do, but I'd rather be with you, Shadow. I'm sure you'd be a lot of help, but I need you here more than anything. I said, 
And before he could protest more, I looked at my uncle. If you're up to it, I need you to come with us and keep an eye on Mom. I wouldn't leave you again, even if you begged me to, he said with a frown. Bight looked at me and exclaimed, I'm not going anywhere with him. I don't want to make you bite, but you're under my care, and I need you with me. Too fucking bad. I'll go to freedom and stay with the Griffins if I have to. I'm not going anywhere with those monsters, she said angrily. Bite, I tried to say, but Wingna cut me off. Shadow, let her go to the Griffins. I'll go too. That caught me off guard. Wingnut? Listen, if you're heading to a place that I'd love to see, but at the same time, it's dangerous. Bite and I would be safer with the Shadow Talons rather than going to Los Alicorn, he said. Aura nodded. I agree with them. I'd hate it if something bad happened to them. Las Alicorn is a very bad place for young ponies, or young anything to be. Don't worry. We'll be back sooner than later. My sisters will keep them safe. And they can take charge of my contract with Wingno while I'm gone. Bite moved closer to me. The look of anger fading as she said, I know you want me to stay with you because of Rusty, but I can't be around either of them right now. But, she cut me off. I know you think that pride isn't bad, and maybe he's different now because of you. But at the same moment, I can't do it. I won't do it. They were both right, I knew, deep down. I was losing myself to Aquila, and traveling with me was the last place they should be. But Wingnut had been with me for so long that it hurt to just have him go off on his own. Bite, I didn't know that well. But I felt like she was my responsibility because of what I promised Rusty. In the end, I nodded. I understand. You can go with Solstice. Thank you, Shadow. Bite said, giving me a small smile. I rubbed her mane, ignoring her protest. Just be safe, okay? Yeah, I will, she said, walking back to Wingnut, sitting near him before looking back at us. You stay safe, too. I nodded, then looked back at the others. So, are we all in agreement? Looks like we are, Doorstop said. We'll head out now, but you make sure you come back to us in one piece. I smiled. You too, old buck. Stardust chuckled, then looked at me. I'll go get the sky carriage. He flew off, and Wingnut came back over to me and pulled the three memory orbs out of his saddlebags. I almost forgot to give these to you. What did you need them for? I took them all and put them into my saddlebags with a smile. Mom can keep denying me all that she wants, but she can't deny memory orbs. I had a feeling something like this would happen to keep me from getting her into the bunker. That's why I had you get these three. He shuffled his hooves a little. You're coming back, right? I pulled him into a hug, doing my best to hold back the emotions welling up inside. Yeah, kiddo, I will. You stay safe and keep an eye on Bite, okay? He nodded. I will. Stay safe. He ran back over to where Solstice and Bite were waiting. I watched him go, remembering the first time I met the colt. He'd grown so much in the past two months. I was lucky to have him as a friend. I sniffled and whispered, I love you, Wingnut. I hope you'll forgive me one day. Ten minutes later, Oricalus, Windthrasher, Aura, and my tied-up mother and myself, and, for some reason, Thundercracker, were all in the sky carriage. Stardust looked up and started to take off, heading west. As we flew, I turned towards Thundercracker and asked, So, you're with us because... You said to look for the sins, and I will, he said. They're heading west, too. I'm only with you for a little bit, then I'll head my own way. We flew in silence for a while before I finally asked, Thundercracker, 
How did you become a sin? He looked over at my uncle, who was still in his pony form, then shrugged. I stole something. Oricalus laughed. You didn't just steal something. You stole a prototype gem from Stratus. Yeah, and what I said is to the same pride. Oricalus. I'm not pride anymore, Thundercracker, my uncle said with a bit of sarcasm. Aura looked at him and asked, What did you steal that would make you a sin? My shield. I heard from a contract of mine that, while I was visiting Stratus, a new kind of tech, I wanted it, so I broke into the research lab and stole it. He said, like it was just a walk in the park. Why didn't they just take it back when they caught you? I asked. My uncle answered, the gem is embedded into his body. They wanted to kill him to take it back, but if he died, the gem would have been useless. Since it's part of him now, if he dies, the gem dies as well. I heard about it when he and he did, and knew that you'd make a good addition to the sins. I was wrong. You're hurting my feelings, Pry. <laughs> I mean, Oricalus. I was a good soldier, Thundercracker said. You were. But you were also a pain in the ass. Still are, really. Thundercracker beamed. And proud of it. Changing the subject, I asked, Where are you from, then? Nimbus? No. I was born and raised in Thunderhead. It's a cloud city near Hoofington. Nasty place to live, if you ask me, and not that fun at all. I didn't like it, so I moved to Stratus. Oricalus laughed again. He was running away from ponies there, too. Stole something from a pony with lots of connections, from what I heard. I didn't steal anything, apart from that fat slob, apart from his daughter's heart. All three of them, truth be told, he said, winking at me. You're a pig. I rolled my eyes. A nasty pig, when Thrasher added. No, I'm a gentle colt that knows what he wants and always gets it, Thundercracker said with a smile as it faded. Not always, I guess. I saw him look up at my uncle and knew he had to be remembering Silver's last moments. I reached out and put a hoof on his, but he pulled away as I started to say, Thundercracker, what happened to Silver wasn't... This is my stop. He said, getting to his hooves. I'll get a message to you when I find the sins. He opened the door and flew away. We watched him fly away, a little confused. Aura saying, Guess he doesn't like to talk about his emotions. Oricalus sighed. He used to not care at all. But I think he took the death of that mere friend of Shadow's hard. I felt a small stab in my heart as he said that. Silver's death was hard on all of us, Uncle Ori. Honestly, I still have trouble with the fact that you killed her for no reason at all, apart from wanting to hurt a pony you hated at the time. Oricalus's body flickered into shadow and back again as he looked down at his hooves. I have a lot of mistakes and evil to make up for, Shadow. I felt anger building up, and anger that I've been trying to lock away ever since I found out who Oricalus was. So, I was desperate to know more about myself, and I needed his help, but now... Why did you have to kill her? He looked up at me. I didn't have to. I wanted to. Aura moved closer to me and put a talon around me. Now isn't the time to talk about this, Shadow. I couldn't help the anger that was building up inside of me as I pulled away. Then when is it a good time, huh? There's always some new bullshit to deal with. I looked back at my uncle, pushing past Aura. You wanted to? Is that how you fell into darkness? So far that killing mares makes you healthy? He looked at me, and the pain I could see in his purple eyes made me pause. Every day I have to fight the darkness inside of me, Star. 
When I first took on this form to keep myself from death after I hurt you, it was easy. But over the years, I've had a harder time fighting it. But to answer your question, yes. Killing makes me happy. And I hate that. Ever since Grimm left Stable 28 and told me you died, I had nothing left to live for. Nothing to keep me from falling further into darkness. All I could do with my life is help my sister to pay back what I did to you. I thought that power I used on you ended up killing you. I let myself grow more evil and didn't care what it was doing to my soul. So yes, I killed Silver because I wanted to. I liked watching her bleed out, loved the sound of her begging me to leave you alone. I didn't care about anything anymore. Not until you nearly destroyed me and I found out who you really were. I stood up and yelled, even before you thought I died, you still killed ponies for no other reason than to make Mom's job easier. You killed Bite's mom. You killed Enclave ponies to keep her safe. You've done goddess knows how many evil things, and for what? You even tried to kill Stardust in Stable 97, when he was already better. Ori Callus got to his hooves, and shadows exploded out from him as he yelled, I know. I can't always control myself, even though I try so hard to keep it back. Why do you think I'm doing this, Star? I'm doing everything I can to make up for my mistakes. Even though I know no matter what I do, I'll never be able to. Don't you dare pull that high horse bullshit on me. When you've done just as many evil things as I have. It was like he'd just slapped me in the face. Aura glared over at my uncle as he melted back into his pony form. You didn't need to go there, Orikalos. No. He's right, I said as I felt my anger fading away. I have no right to judge him for what he did when I've done things just as bad. At least he has an excuse. I just did what I did out of anger. Orikala seemed to calm himself down as he said, No. Both of us have done bad things. I'm not trying to hurt you, but you and I both need to make up for what we've done wrong in life. I nodded, saying, I still can't forgive you for what you did to her, Uncle Ori, but I can try to get past it. I've been trying to. I never asked you to forgive me for killing her, he said. Wind Thrasher finally spoke up. Why does so much death have to happen in the Wasteland? My uncle sighed again. Because the Wasteland is a living thing, or at least that's what some believe. They say that when Equestria died, the Wasteland took over, a creature that pushes its way into all parts of our world. It loves watching ponies suffer, likes watching them try and overcome the pain in the end. The Wasteland always wins. When Thresher fluttered her wings at that, as Stardust said, Living thing or not, I'll never let the Wasteland win with me or any of my friends. Orticalus looked back through the small window that looked out at Stardust. You're still young, Stardust. One day you'll see that you can't win against the Wasteland. Aura rolled her eyes and reached over to me to pull me onto her lap, holding me close to her. It's all about how you live your life. You're given, I say. I could die tomorrow and I'd be fine with it, because I've found the other half to my soul. I couldn't tap, but laugh a little as I nuzzled into her. Only you can come up with something so sad and sweet at the same time. She shrugged. I'm just sick of all this sad talk and anger. We have a long flight, so why not talk about happy things? Like, what did you see in the memory orbs? I wouldn't count what I saw in her memories as happy, I replied. Fine. Aura said, looking at Wind Thrasher. What'd you two see in there, Wind Thrasher? Wind Thrasher looked over at me for a long moment. I gave her a small shake of the head before nuzzling back into Aura. Finally, she said, It was mostly things from Grimm's past. I think she wanted Shadow to understand what happened to her, and why she had to save her. And from what I saw, she didn't have a happy life. I think the happiest I saw my sister was when she was with Nightshade and when Star was born. Orikala said, smiling. I still remember the day Star was born. 
I've never seen so much joy in my life. We had a nasty childhood. All she ever wanted was to be a wife and mother so she could be a better mom than ours. She also wanted a stallion that was a great father. He was lucky enough to have both. I've been meaning to ask you, Uncle Ori. Did that always hate you, or was that only after I was hurt? Nightshade and I never got along. Neither did Stryker and I. Why? I mean, I can't figure out why Dad would hate you so much, at least before I was hurt, I asked. It's been like that for a long time, and not just with your father or uncle. Our two families have hated each other ever since our ancestor Dwarfstar died, he said. I looked at him, confused. Uh-huh. Why is that? Shadow, do you know anything about your father's family? A little. Well, at least what I picked up on them in memories. Dad's descended from Night Stalker? I said. Aura's talons dropped as she said, Wait a minute. You mean shadows? And that's right. She's descended from three of the children of the night. Minette on our side, Night Stalker, and Lightning Dust on the other. That's so... strange, Windthrasher said. You always think you'll never meet any pony with famous ancestors. Orikella shrugged. Life's funny like that. But still, it's besides the point right now. A long time ago, when Dwarf Star was getting old and his magic starting to fade, he was working with the son of... Nightingale. I interrupted. Who's Nightingale? To my surprise, Aura answered. She's Night Stalker's youngest foal and only daughter. I looked back at her. How'd you know that? Tato told me once. I guess she came to the Red Talons a few months after her father died. Well, vanished, but same thing at this point. She was trying to work something out with the Red Talons. It didn't go far, though. That's how I know. From what he told me, she was a very well-respected mare, who even Greta's son liked, even though she was Enclave. Oricalus continued. Yes. Well, as far as I know, from what Grimm was able to learn, Nightingale was the second pony to take over as the Guardian. The first was a zebra, who was a child of the night. She passed on her role as Guardian as her s to her son, and he was working with Dwarfstar, Dwarf Star had a daughter called Ebony Star, who fell in love with his stallion, who was named Night Rain. Dwarf Star didn't like it, so he confronted Nightingale, telling her to keep her son away from his daughter. To this day, no pony knows what happened. But Dwarf Star ended up fighting with Nightingale, and at some point, Night Rain came in during the fight. He ended up killing Dwarf Star, then threw his body into the street. Not long after, Ebony Star took revenge for her father's death, and she killed Nightingale and Night Rain during a performance that was taking place in the Crystal Empire at the time. Our families have hated each other ever since. That is, until Stryker started seeing Grimm, and later Nightshade. They never saw Grimm as part of our family, and always treated her well. But Nightshade and Stryker still hated me, saying that I was just like the rest of our family. Murray Callis said, so Dad hates you because of a family feud? That's so stupid, I said. I agree, though in the end I lived up to what Nightshade thought about me, he said with a sigh. I took a long moment to take it all in, to think that the families of the children would end up killing and hating each other years after the war ended. Finally, I said, I wonder why it all had to happen. Orikala shrugged. The Children of the Night fell apart after the Enclave started. One of their own betrayed Night Stalker right before the Megaspells went off, and again many years later. The last betrayal fell and led to Night Stalker becoming a Dashite. Aura stiffened at that, then said, The Children's Curse. Windthrasher looked over at her, asking, The what? Orikalis answered, She's talking about the curse that the Children of the Night have on their descendants. Curses aren't real, though, I said. Yes and no. It is hard to explain. Grimm knows more about it than I do. 
But many years after the war ended, a traitor to Equestria was hunted down by the Children of the Night in his home. He used a crystal given to him by a zebra witch doctor, and used it to put a spell on all of the children. And after he did, bad things started happening to them, Orikala said. I saw that memory. Captain Flash Sentry? I said. That's the one, Orikala said. That's the same night the first of them fell, Phoenix Heart. Later, they lost more to attacks. A month before the war ended, Amethyst Star was murdered in Canterlot by a zebra sympathizer. After that, Minette went a little crazy and stole a bunch of memory orbs the Children of the Night had made of themselves. Then she up and vanished three days before the bombs fell. Night Stalker's sister was killed during the attack on Mont Pegasus. Once the Enclave was formed, he chased off Rainbow Dash. Then a young mare named Scootaloo starting the Dashite program. Griffinstone was destroyed, and because of that, he lost his closest friend Greta. Later, Babseed was killed by Greta. Thunderlane died a little bit before Night Stalker vanished. The story is that Greta threw him into a vat of taint. Honestly, I think only one of them lived a relatively normal life, and that was Cloudy Nights. She lived to be 93, and had six kids and a lot of grandkids. Mom always said that her own family still suffered from the curse, Aura said. I told you about that before, Shadow, how I was worried about things being with you because I didn't want to lose you like I did with Tripwire. I thought back to that night and finally told Aura how I felt about our family's curse. So this has been affecting every one of the descendants? The ones that I know about, yes, Orikalos said. Though, that's not saying much, since the only descendants I know about are our own. Nightshade, Striker, the Blood Talons, and Winter's Frost. That one made me lift my head and look over at my uncle. Wait, Sergeant Winter Frost? The asshole who attacked me at the FNF Tools Factory and again in Frosty Summit? The very same. He's the last descendant of Thunderlane. He said, and then he added... Oh, right. And a man named Fairy Glitter who lives in Stratus. She's descended from Cloudy Nights. If there are more, then I don't know about them. I know Babseed had a son, but after her death, he went into hiding, and I never found out what happened to him, or if he had any kids. I was still lost, knowing Winter Thrust. Frost was descended from the Children of the Night. While I took that in, Windthresher asked, How much do you know about them, Oricalus? I was one of the ponies who helped Grimm research them. It's honestly not that hard to find information about those who are descended from whom, at least in the Enclave, he said. For a few minutes, we all sat in silence. Then the other pony, he said, caught my attention. Fairy glitter? My uncle looked over at me confused. What about her? Does she live in the high rise in Stratus? I asked. Yeah, but how do you know that? Oh, right, you've been getting help from Solstice. She must have told you, he said. Huh? Why would Solstice tell me about fairy glitter? I asked. He looked at me just as confused as I was. She's fairy glitter's daughter. She's married to a retired officer named Cascade. My eyes went wide. Fairy Glitter's Solstice's mom? But Fairy Glitter's doorstep sister? Holy shit! All my friends looked over at me, Wind Thresher asking, I didn't even know that doorstop had a sister. How did you know that? That was the mare I sent the letter to for him, I said. No wonder doorstop and Solstice seem to get along so well. They have a face, your attitude. They're related. I wonder if Solstice knows. I wonder if Doorstop knows. Aura pulled me closer to her again. Don't worry about it right now, Shadow. I'm sure if Doorstop does know, and if he hasn't told her, then he wants it kept a secret. Ow. Would you stop grabbing me like that, Aura? I said. You're being more clingy than usual. Talon's hurt. Aura held me tighter. No, Shadow, just accept the couple time. 
I looked back up at her and realized I was trapped, then submitted. But what if he doesn't know? Door stops said he kept in contact with ponies on the outside when he was in Stable 97, Windthrasher said. I'm sure he knows about Solstice. I sighed, then laid back. What are the odds, though? Marty Callis shrugged. I don't know much about Doorstop, honestly. I knew that Fairy Glitter had a brother, but never learned much about him. Though, seeing how Fairy Glitter has access to highly top-secret things going on in Stratus and Nimbus, I wouldn't be surprised if she put him in Stable 97. For what that reason, I'm not sure. But she has the clearance to do so. He told me something about... That. He said his sister wanted him to keep an eye on her friend, Dr. Limbus, who was the mayor who created the memory modification pods. They're friends. Or at least that's what Doorstop said. Auric Alice took a moment to think about that. Maybe. But I can't see a stallion giving up 20 years of his life to keep an eye on his sister's friend. No, that doesn't make sense. Has to be another reason he was part of the Devil's Children program. I knew we weren't going to get anywhere right now with Doorstop, since he wasn't here at the moment, so I decided to change the subject. Speaking of that program, Stardust shouted from the front of the carriage, I'd like to never speak about that again if we could manage it. I still get nightmares of my brain being practically microwaved. I know, Stardust, but I just need to know something. I yelled before looking back at my uncle. When did Dr. Stormy come up with that program? It had to be before she joined the Ministry. You know about Stormy? He asked. Yeah, I saw her in a few of Mother's memory orbs when I was in the bunker. They seemed really close. I said, looking over at the bench where Mom was sleeping and tied up. They were. Stormy was one of Grimm's oldest friends. As to when she started the program, well, I'd say it started about 23 years ago. She had this wild idea to modify a pony's DNA to make them stronger and faster than your average pony. And the higher-ups in both Cloud Cities liked the idea because for many years we've had trouble with Navarro. Having soldiers that were enhanced would be a big plus for us. Sadly, her first and only subject to undergo the treatment was a failure. You mean sloth? I asked. Yes. This was a few years before I became pride. Sloth was everything that they wanted, but he had a big drawback. He burned through so much energy, it took a while for his body to make it back up, Orikala said. So she went back to the drawing board and came up with a different way of making the perfect super soldier. Stardust said, and thus the Devil's Program was created, right? Yeah, Orikala said. It was her idea. But how it was executed was mostly the council. The first step was we needed a safe place to keep the foals, so Stable 97 was invaded. I looked down at my hooves, and a lot of stable ponies died. Yes. And before you ask, no, I wasn't part of that. I still worked for the military research at the time. Anyway, yes, the Enclave killed most of the ponies, and the rest escaped. We modified the stable to meet our needs, and we engineered an epidemic for both cloud cities and surface cities. We took both new foals, saying that they were sick and died during later treatment. Those were the first ponies to become the new inhabitants of Stable 97. The first couple of years mostly just raised them like normal foals. Stardust laughed. Normal my ass. We started learning how to fight when we were two. Orichalus rolled his eyes. Relatively normal then. But as I was saying, the Enclave raised them to think that they were born there. Later, they all went through intense training and mental stimulation to make sure we got the perfect soldier. A few years later, the so-called epidemic hit again, and a few more foals joined the first set. What I don't get is how Stormy could have even started a program so horrible, I said. Ori Callus laughed again. If you saw Stormy in your mother's memories, and you only saw a small side of her... She's always been a mare who's wanted to better the lives of the Enclave and ponies in general, but in her own special way. When she was around Grimm, she was more laid back, happy, sarcastic. When she was working with a pony, with one thing in mind, to get the job done. She was all about results, always has been, 
Take the sins, for example. Wait a minute, Aura said. You mean Stormy created the sins? No, I created the sins. She just had the idea for a special ops team and used it to keep me from being banished when I couldn't be killed. I expanded on the idea and made my team. The first pony I had joined me was Sloth. Back then, he was being held at a facility where he was kept drugged so he wouldn't hurt any pony. Funny, for some reason I always thought Envy was the first sin you added to the team, I said. He chuckled. No, Envy came a couple of years later. Sloth and Gluttony were my first sins, then Envy. Later came Wrath and Greed, and then later, Lust. Gluttony, I hadn't thought about that monster in a long time. Why did you make Gluttony into a sin? What could he have done that made him into one? Michael's face fell a little. I didn't want him to die. You see, I've known Gluttony since I was around your age, Star. My jaw dropped open, and Nora said, You were friends with that monster even back then? He nodded. He wasn't always that way. Before he was a sin, he was one of the most respected scientists in Nimbus. One day, one of his own experiments went wrong, and as he ended up like you see him now. He was always hungry, and his intelligence fell by 95%. He had enough left to plant the gem into his tongue, though. It was one of his own experiments, and it made so he could eat just about anything. Then he attacked, and ate his entire research team. I gagged a little. So that's what he did. Yes. They wanted to kill him because of what he became. He was my friend, and I didn't want to see him die, so I made him a sin. He still knew who I was, and he always listened to me. So as long as I could control him, the council was fine with it, he said. So that's why you were so angry when I killed him, I said. He shrugged. Yeah. When Sloth found me and told me that he attacked you, I went looking for him. When I saw what you did to him, I lost all control of my emotions. Though now that I've had time to think, I think it's a better thing for him to be put out of his misery. Even though most of his brain was mush, he still remembered that he used to be one of the smartest ponies in the Enclave. He hated being called stupid because of that. Thinking back to that day, I remembered something. I used my Pippa to find the recording I took from Gluttony and pulled it out. I found this on him when he died, though I've never listened to it. Wrath had a recording, too. The one of his daughter? Do all the sins have one? I was wondering where that was. He said, To answer your question, yes. Well, almost yes. Mine was destroyed when you blew up Appleton, and Envy doesn't have one since I raised him as a sin. It's a reminder of what you used to be. Mine was a recording of my confession to the Council for hurting you. Should... should I listen to it? I asked. Star, you don't need my permission to... Listen to it. Honestly, I was a little surprised that you told me you hadn't listened to it yet. I nodded, then started to play it. It started out with the voice I remembered from Gluttony, only slightly less annoying. This is Dr. Jolst, and today I'll be documenting some interesting things I found in a virus sent over to me by a colleague of mine from Thunderhead. According to his findings, this virus can affect ponies in a way that makes them revert to their most basic instincts. An example of this is eating another pony's flesh. The odd thing I found was that it doesn't seem to work on Pegasi. It's a good thing for us if we ever wanted to wipe out the lesser races of Equestria, but still highly dangerous. As I've experimented with this virus's biology, I've found that if you alter some of the strands on its DNA, it can affect Pegasi. My discovery is still in its earlier stages, but I have a feeling that if I were to send this information back to Thunderhead, my colleague could find a way to use it against the Cloud Cities. So I must do everything that I can to make sure this never falls into his hooves. I've tested it on a couple of ponies already, and the results are... terrifyingly gruesome, even. If he ever wants to utilize this to work for our race, then he'll have to figure it out on his own. 
I will not be responsible for killing my home. I will be presenting my success to the council when I'm finished today. Maybe I'll have Oricalus check it out first. See if magic affects the virus. The recording ended, and I looked over at my uncle. He showed you this virus? He nodded. I had just started being pride. But I still hadn't helped out with his research when I could. I told him to destroy it, and I thought that he would. But something happened, and he was exposed. Aura gave him a funny look. This virus sounds like something that affects the raiders in Hoofington. Over the last year, more and more raiders have been showing up around there, and even way crazier than the ones they're used to. Oricalus nodded again. I had the same thought. I wouldn't be surprised if the pony was talking about was trying to make his virus work again, even after all these years. Before any of us could say anything, Mom jumped and looked around. Then her eyes fell on me, and she started yelling, Let me go! I just rolled my eyes, as Ori Callus said. Quiet down, Grim. There's nothing you can do right now. She turned her head as much as she could. Pride! How dare you let her tie me up like this! I'm your sister. You're supposed to help me. Not this pain in the ass. He sighed. I am helping you, sis. You just can't seem to get over your hatred. Mom opened her muzzle to yell again when Windthrasher moved closer to her and bore her fangs. Listen to me, Grimoire. You're lucky that none of us killed you back there. Now, I know you don't want to believe Shadows, your own, or your own brother, about who she is. But right now, you aren't in your right mind. They want to help you, and I respect that. But if you don't stop yelling and saying horrible things about my friend, I'll rip your throat out. Now shut up and get over yourself. Mom's eyes went wide at the sight of Wind Thrasher's large fangs only a few inches away. She gulped and said in a quieter voice, Fine, but you'll all pay for this. Mock my words. I couldn't help but chuckle a little. Trust me, Grim. When we have time, I'll show you the truth. Even if you fight me all the way. Stardust just yelled back at us. Hey, Shadow. It's getting late and I'm tired. You good with stopping to take a cat nap or something? I moved towards the window that overlooked the driver. Sure, but we're in the middle of nowhere. And I'm not really fond of being so vulnerable... He started to turn the sky carriage as he said. And there's what looks like an old motel down there. We'll use that for shelter. A motel? Around here? I asked, looking out the window again to see a small building sitting right next to a huge crack in the ground. What the hell is that? My uncle looked out the window, ignoring his glaring sister, and said, That's San Palmino Gorge. It used to be a famous place for ponies to visit before the war. I'd hate falling into that thing, I said as Stardust flew closer to the black crack in Equestria's crust. I think it'd be a good thing, Mom said in a low whisper. I just rolled my eyes and ignored her as Stardust landed the sky carriage. We all got out, Oricalus carrying Mom and his magic. As he did, I asked, I noticed you're able to keep yourself in your pony form now. He smiled a little as Stardust wanted to see if the small hotel was safe. I'm not as strong as I used to be, but I can stay like this now. I won't have to hide in your shadow anymore. I smiled a little. It's nice to actually see you. It's nice to actually be seen, he said. Okay, sis, let's get you to bed. Fuck you, pride, Mom said as she struggled in her brother's magical grip. Aura laughed and poked Mom as they started walking towards the motel. Ah, oh, look. The mean old cloak is cranky. She needs a nap. The place is clear, but only one room is in good condition to hunker down on. We're gonna have to share. Stardust yelled. That's fine. We won't be here long. I said as I started to follow my uncle and Aura. Shadow? Windthrasher said, putting a hoof on my shoulder to stop me. We need to talk. I sighed and looked back at her. Windthrusher, I know what you're going to say, and please don't. 
I'm worried, Shadow. Then don't be. I already told you I'm not going to do anything unless I have to. She stood her ground. Shadow, you've lied to us before. How can I trust that you won't go off in the middle of the night and do what your mom said to get rid of Aquila? I pulled her closer and then hugged her as I whispered into her ear. You're going to have to trust me. She hugged me back as she said, That's the problem. I don't trust you. I know you too well. You'll lie to us so we won't worry. But you can't do that anymore. Think about Aura and Wingnut. Think about your uncle and your dad, even your mom. You know what Ravain would say if she saw that what we did in those memories? I didn't let her go, as I said quieter. That's the thing. I'm thinking about them. I'm thinking about every pony in Equestria. She pulled away from me, shaking her head. No. You're just scared. Here, I thought you were brave. Someone that could stand up to anything. But you're just a fucking coward. I sighed and let the comet roll off me. No, I just see the bigger picture. I turned towards the motel. I'm not giving up, Windthrasher. If I was, I would have done it already. I'm just being practical. If I can't fix myself soon, then it has to happen. She followed me as we made our way to the door that Stardust was holding open for us. The moment we walked in, rain started to fall, and soon we were drenched. I shook my mane as we finally got into the small room, hoping that Windthrasher would keep her muzzle shut. As Stardust shut the door, he asked, What were you two talking about? I looked over at Windthrasher for a moment, and she sighed and said, Nothing. I turned away and looked around the room. Well, at least we can stay dry in here. Let's get some light. It's way too dark for my liking. As I walked past Mom, she chuckled. Oh, is the little courier scared of the dark? Well, there's probably not even electricity here. I ignored her and walked over to a lamp sitting on the far nightstand. Hopefully this place still had some kind of power. I could just make out the lamp in the dark. It reminded me of the one I saw in the fiend town outside of Stable Nine. A creature I'd only seen in books was holding onto a light bulb in his paw, giving me a wicked grin. I tried to use my magic to pull the chain, but it sparked and fizzled. Fucking magic. It's not your magic star. The gorge messes with unicorn magic. It's normal around here, Orikala said. Of course it does, I said, reaching up a hoof to pull the chain. Right as I touched the lamp and started to pull off the chain, a mischievous voice echoed out of the lamp. Pips and jacks, chaos and order. You'll have to follow the signs to find the land of ponies and free yourself from a land of misery and bibbidi-bibbidi, bobbidi-dee. Oh, and forget about boo! The voice made me jump right out as I pulled down the chain, and then everything vanished. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Galloping gun. Wow, it looks took you a long time to get this talented with a gun. While levitating a ranged weapon in your magic, your weapon spread is halved, even when walking or running. Quest perk added. Wild Wasteland rank 2. Wait, there's a rank 2? Does it just get weirder 